Hi girls, welcome to this month's chapter meeting. Last month we shared our video, hashtag arise and take your place, that we had shared portions of at our conference this past October, which was, has been a few months now. Yeah. So in a sense, this video we're doing now for February feels like the first video for us in this new year. Yeah. And our theme for the year is hashtag arise. And just to give you a bit of an overview for the year, we want to let you know what you can expect and what you can look forward to each month coming up. Every month, we are asking God to show us two specific things. First, we are going to ask Him to highlight what we need to shake off. Yep. This is step one. We want to be aware of where our thinking needs to be transformed. What contaminants or empire mindset and false stronghold does he want to remove from our lives? Remember from last year's teachings, an empire mindset is all about self. And then what's a stronghold? It's defined as a fortified place, a place of security or survival. And when we fortify it, that means that it is something that is made stronger or more secure. Nothing is going to break into that place. Nothing or no one. Sometimes it's a place that we won't even let God into. Do you have any areas like that? Sure do. Do you have any areas <laughs> like that? <laughs> Someone might get a little too close and you bring up that fortified wall. Well, this just might be the year to arise and shake that off. That's right. I'm looking forward to it. And not only are we going to do all of that, we are also going to ask God to reveal and teach us about false strongholds. So in his book on forgiveness, Rodney Hogue describes strongholds as ingrained repetitive thinking processes that your mind regularly travels down. These become ruts that you just can't get your wheels out of. Where have we allowed our beliefs to be shaped by culture or even experience? That is what we're going to be talking about this year as we look at how we can allow the Word of God to shape us rather than the world. And we are certain that as we seek Him and shake off what He asks us to, that in return He's going to show us how to arise and not just rise but rise with expectancy. This is the action step that we're going to take once we shake off the old identity and replace it with the kingdom identity that he intends for us. What I am learning in this season is that the path that God wants us to take is different from the ruts the enemy wants me to live in. God has no greater desire than for each one of us to know who we are and step into this identity that we've been given through his son Jesus. The spirit man inside becomes expectant for the new you to be revealed and this allows hope to rise up. It's in that hopeful place that you can take your place. And you're gonna step into this place that God has planned, his purpose for your life. So each of these remaining months of this entire year, we are going to identify, like Chrissy said, the things that God says, shake that mm -hmm. off. It's not part of you. That's not who you are anymore. That's done. And we are going to seek his desire to activate expectancy within us as we then arise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, aren't you, are, are you excited? I'm are, excited. Are you ready? I got goosebumps <laughs> just thinking about it. Yeah. So, I mean, we can just come together month after month and have a meeting or we can come together month after month expect it and leave each meeting changed exactly into more of who christ has made us to be yeah so and exciting in the kingdom in the kingdom yeah so all right so here we go then last month we hopped on the ship with paul as he traveled from port to port while praying his life would be spared in the stormy sea as we prepared for that teaching the lord led me to a video on youtube called four anchors storm warnings ahead it was by Pastor John Kilpatrick. And in his teaching on the events of the same chapter that we are studying at the time, which is Acts 27, he pointed out four anchors on the ship with Paul. They are, first, the immutability of God's word. The second anchor is God's mercy. Anchor number three is the presence of God. And anchor number four is God's sovereignty. 
So throughout the year, we are going to allow God to show us the value and purpose of these four anchors. This month, we are going to see how Paul was able to shift his focus in the midst of what seemed like a hopeless situation, and he was able to hashtag arise expectant. Yep, it's, it's really so cool. You guys are going to love this ship we're on. We are sailing off <laughs> into identity, sailing yeah, into yeah. our identity. That's right. That's I love good. that. Yep. So I'm going to admit that um, the word immutable <laughs> is a very big word for me. <laughs> it was even hard to say it it's, sometimes. It's a, yeah, it's not one we use every day. No. Not it's one we use every day. Not one we use every day, but I can tell you it can roll right off of Shirley Hartnett's <laughs> tongue very easily. She um, She's used it in a sentence a time or two when she's been in my presence, and I just admire her for that. Uh -huh. uh, she actually knew what it meant, too. She used it in the right context. Amazing. The word immutable is defined by Merriam-Webster as not capable of changing or being changed. It is completely unchangeable. The nature of the word is attached to the one who wrote it. Just as God is unchanging, so is his word. Mm -hmm. His word contains his very nature. I mean, this is all really big stuff to get our heads around, I think is the fact that the word contains his very nature. Regardless of the change in cultures throughout all of history, God mm -hmm. has never changed. Right. He is never going to change. He, he cannot, cannot change yeah, he can't. from who he is. Mm -mm. The book of Hebrews tells us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, mm -hmm. and forever. forever. So it's up to us now to shake off any false stronghold that we are holding onto that allows our beliefs, values, and lifestyles to be shaped by the culture in which we live instead of the immutable word of God. God never mm -hmm. intended for us to change and become more like the people and the culture in which we live. Right. So we are gonna arise in our understanding this month of the immutability of God's word. The same God that created the universe, that created Adam and Eve, that created Moses, that created David and Paul, all for their purpose is the same God that we serve today. And we can see that cultures change so many significant ways over time, but we must understand that God has not. Has not, will not. Yeah, can't. 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 True. He can't. Can't. Against his nature. So we're going to do our best to break down our understanding of the word. Now John writes, and the Amplified Bible reads like this, In the beginning, before all time, was the word, Christ. And the word was with God, and the word was God himself. The word of God doesn't change because it is God and has always been so. When we concede to this truth, we accept that the Word of God is the only reliable source of truth. Right. Hear me, hear me. The Word of God is the only reliable source of truth, wisdom, and guidance. Right. So let's look at the translations of the term word and recognize its significance for us today. So in the beginning was the word, here, and the way this word is used in its original language, the term is logos, a word which is uttered by a living voice. It embodies a concept or an idea. Logos refers to the total inspired word of God, the total word of God, the Bible, the words in the Bible, the physical manifestation of God's spoken word, the word which God spoke and inspired man to write down. The written word of God, that's Logos. An example of Logos is the word describing itself. <laughs> I mean, yeah. the word describes itself. For the word of God is living and active and full of power, making it operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating as far as the division of the soul and spirit, the completeness of a person, and of both joints and marrow the deepest parts of our nature. 
exposing and judging the very thoughts and intentions of our heart. That's what Hebrews 4.12 tells right. us about the word. And, yeah. and the next aspect of the word that we're going to talk about is the rhema word. Blue Letter Bible defines this as that which is or has been uttered by the living voice, the thing spoken, or the word. My pastor taught that rhema indicates the spark of life. When the living word becomes alive in you, it's a spark. It's like I talked about in the beginning, we talked about the ruts. When we step <laughs> off the ruts out of there, that thing inside of you, there's a spark of life that you just know, I have just done something that the rhema inside of me, the word of God is coming to life. It carries this living presence that makes a profound impact on you. The rhema literally means utterance, individually, collectively, or specifically. Examples of this rhema word are when Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. And then the angel left her. The word had a profound impact on her life. The same is true for Simon Peter when Jesus told him to put his net on the other side of the boat. And, Master, we've worked all hard all night to the point of exhaustion and caught nothing in our nets. But at your word, I will do as you say and lower the nets again. His word had a profound impact on the lives of Peter and the disciples. Yep. And then we have the Lego word, which Blue Letter Bible defines as to say, to speak, affirm, over, to maintain, to teach, to exhort, advise, to command. We see an example of the Lego word in our section of scripture from Acts 27 when Paul says, the angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood before me and said, stop being afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar and behold, God has given you the lives of all all those who are sailing with you. So another example of the Lego word is found in Matthew when he writes, But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, descendant of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Lego word. So the Logos word comes from the word of God. The rhema word is the living word spoken through the Holy Spirit. And the lego word is spoken as advice, to teach, to exhort, to advise, to command, direct, to point out with words. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what we're doing. We're mm -hmm. speaking lego words right. about the logos word and hoping that the <laughs> rhema word <laughs> well, is coming well, out in well, the midst well, of it. spark something. <laughs> <laughs> and the test of authenticity then of a rhema word or a lego word is how it compares to the whole of the scripture. What we must always remember is that God does not, he will not ever contradict his written word. He's not going to change what he said to make us comfortable and allow us to remain the same. And I remember when the Logos word was uh, spoke to me for the very first time. I was just a babe in Christ when Ephesians 4.26 was highlighted to me. And I don't know if you even remember, you probably do all those years ago <laughs> when I came to you and I said, you know what I discovered? Oh my goodness. I was reading the Bible <laughs> and, it said, and it said, you've done that a few times. I do that <laughs> quite often. Do you know what I just saw in the word? It says, be angry, but do not sin. Well, for somebody who struggled with a bit of anger inside of her, that was like, boing, how do you do that? <laughs> what does that mean? I don't really know. It says, do not let the sun go down on the cause of your anger. It dropped inside of me and I felt this overwhelming sense of conviction. Why? Because the rhema word sparked mm -hmm. inside of me and that anger that I had often spilled out onto people who really did nothing to deserve it. And so when the rhema word came every time anger would begin to stir inside of me that holy spirit would remind me mm -hmm. of that verse and it would 
bring it back to my mind and I'd say, oh yeah, I forgot. I'm not supposed to allow <laughs> the sun to go down on my anger. And then it became a Lego word. Every time somebody would offer me advice or exhort me on ways to overcome it. This is the point when you either arise and accept the word that God has implanted as truth and then you shake off that part so I had a decision. Am I going to shake off anger, move away from that rut that I've always gone down this, this is how I've always responded. This is what comes natural to me. Mm -hmm. This is what, how I always do what I've done. Am I going to shake that off? And then am I going to step over now into this new place that God is calling me that says you can overcome this? Mm -hmm. Because it's not part of my word. It's not supposed to be part of you. Mm -hmm. Because it's not part of who I am, it's not really part of who you are right. in your new identity. Yeah. Yes. So I remember clearly a time that God brought a rhema word to me. And th this is like a this is like a foundational, like this was this foundational to my entire walk. Um, mm -hmm. And it was at a time when anxiety and panic was ruling my life. And my two pastors had just prayed for me and um, to be set free from like the spirit of fear, which by the way, is exactly what the root of panic attacks and anxiety is a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. um, and it's an undesirable stronghold. And so as I left this place after being prayed for, God spoke a rhema word um, through the Holy Spirit when he spoke to me that I was not to waver in unbelief. Because I left there and I remember the battle in my mind um, was, okay, something definitely just happened. Yeah. But what if it wears off? <laughs> right. You know, what if it's, what if it wasn't real? What if it, you know, doesn't hold? Yeah. What right. if I mess this up? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that, be, that is exactly the thing I had to shake off. And that's like yeah. when he dropped that rhema word, the, the, and th that was you will not waver in unbelief. It just dropped in my mind. And um, so when I got home, I knew it was scripture. So I looked it up and it was from Romans 4.20 that says, he did not waver in unbelief about the promise of God, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. So this became a rhema word to me. So it, it told me that I was not gonna want, I was not gonna waver in unbelief thinking that God did not really do something in me, right. that he did not set me free. Um, I'm not, I was not going to waver there. And then, um, but also, it was the promise of God th that he was strengthening my faith for his glory. So it just became such a rich and lively word and for me. So this was the Logos word that verified the truth for me that I could continue in faith knowing that the spirit of fear was no longer had a place in me, um, that God had truly done a work in me. So it continued to be a rhema word in the months following as I used it over and over to renew, to, to renew my mind, to shake off the lies mm -hmm. and rise up in the truth of my identity. So right. as I shook off the stronghold of anxiety as time went on, I was able to do that and it literally like this rhema word literally replaced the medication that I was taking at the time and that I had been relying on for months and months and months. So um, it, it, it took me out of the rut of, of the unbelief and of, out of the rut of the, the lies and the, that fed into the fear and the anxiety and, and it became a rhema word. Yeah, that's awesome. I remember all that too. Yeah, I bet you do. It was Because powerful. then it became it was a, a Logos word for both of us. I mean, those two, those two situations, as we sat and did life together and mm -hmm. studied the word together and walked through these moments of overcoming the fear, mm -hmm. overcoming anger, uh, just allowing the word to change us, then it became Legos words as we used it, the word, mm -hmm. to remind one mm -hmm. another of what God has done, mm -hmm. what God has said. Mm -hmm. You know, we we encouraged one another and we exhorted one another yes. to step up. Nope, don't go back there. Nope, step up. 
Mm-hmm. So and even now, as we tell it, it continues to be a, like a Lego work. Yeah. So for yeah. you, yeah, that's so, awesome. Yeah. As we look again at X twenty seven, according to what Paul could see with his natural eyesight, things were going to end badly for every passenger on the ship they were on. Right. Until he experienced that Lego word. He was given a word of instruction and exhortation. It was in this moment that hope filled Paul and he was able to stand up and offer hope to the rest of his passengers. Yeah. I like how John Kilpatrick said Paul was the salt that seasoned the entire ship with protection. It made me wonder how we can become that salt that seasons those who are in our circles too, in the same boat that we are. Yeah. How can we help to cover them with protection? The angel spoke to Paul, you must appear before Caesar. And he accepted the words spoken to him by the angel. Receiving this information from a reliable source, and I'd say an angel's a reliable. I would say. (laughs) I would say an angel's a reliable source. If an angel shows up at my doorstep (laughs) and says, I've come from God, I'm going to be... I'm going to yeah, believe him. Yes. I'm, I think it's reliable. Yeah, reliable. I'll pay attention. When this happened, he now knew that he must appear before Caesar. And so he knew that he would need to survive this current storm in order to be able to do that. Yeah. He recognized the word as truth based on his relationship with Jesus and his belief that God had a plan and a purpose for him. He definitely was still in the storm. The storm right. hadn't changed. But he also had a choice to make to take God at his word and not allow the chaos of the storm to affect his belief of what he had heard. So I believe this was the moment that hopelessness became expectancy for Paul. Yeah. So when storms come, what word do we cling to? What word do you cling to? Mm -hmm. Is your word hopelessness? Is your word based upon a cultural definition that everything is bad and that it's all hopeless? That relationships can never change. That at the health condition that you have defines who you are. Is there a sense of dread every day when you wake up just feeling hopeless? Why do you think you're living in a culture with a high rate of depression? Is that where you see yourself right now? In a place of hopelessness? In a relationship that feels hopeless, in a job or with a diagnosis that created chaos and stormy conditions in your life. Hopelessness is a false stronghold. It is a barrier to the kingdom identity that God intends for you. And the enemy wants to keep you there in that rut. That's right. And when I get into boats that bounce me from one port to another, trying to throw out anchor sporadically, please stop me, please stop me, stop me from moving in this ship, um, they don't have any lasting effect. There's no lasting effect there. My vocabulary becomes the always mm. and the nevers. This always happens to me. This is why I don't get my hopes up never going to get any better than this. I'm never going to feel better, am I? He, they, she will never change. Can you relate? Do you live in the always and the nevers? There was this moment for Paul when he could no longer look at the storm. He could no longer focus on the waves and the way the rock, uh, the boat was rocking back and forth. He could not put his focus there. He had to do, there's action, right? He had to do what the angel told him to do. Why was Paul able to be so confident that he, it was going to turn out just as that angel said? It was because of the relationship mm-hmm. aspect. The relationship that Paul had with Jesus was so intimate and so personal that at that moment when he received that word from the angel, he was able to shake off the contamination of fear and doubt and his own perceived what he saw from the natural circumstance caused him to perceive, I'm dying here. (laughs) I'm going to die here. But it was that word, the Legos word from the angel that came and Paul said, whoa, 
I've, I remember now, I remember that I've got this relationship with Jesus and I can hold on to him in the storm. And what could change in our lives if we allow God's word to change us instead of accepting the words of those around us who are also experiencing hopelessness mm -hmm. and depression Sometimes. and despair. And they're mm -hmm. in their own storm. And because they can't see beyond the storm, they're only going to be able to offer you the same words that you're hearing right now. Stay in the rut. Stay in the rut. I'm pulling you back. Get mm -hmm. back in this rut. Mm -hmm. That's what the enemy wants to do. Come back in this mm -hmm. rut. Don't step out there and hope. Don't do it. God has a very different description of who you are than what others say about you. He has a different description about you and about me. The same God that Paul trusted in that storm that he was in, in that day. Can you even picture it? Just go back and picture it in your mind. See the storm. See Paul on that boat. That same God that showed up with the Lego word is the exact same God that's coming down to meet us today. Mm -hmm. The same word that he spoke to Paul is the same word that he's speaking to us through the Logos word. It becomes the Rhema word when it sparks in us. There's hope there. So we don't look at the wind. We don't look at the wave. We don't step into fear. We say, I'm going to survive this. And others will see that you are surrounded by women who love you, who want you to follow God and want to help you rise up and, and take comfort in, gosh, Jesus fell asleep on the boat in the middle of mm -hmm. a storm. A storm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's just go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't we be able to find rest? And I believe that there's yeah. that place of peace that we can look at and say, I need the Logos word to remind me that there's a, a rhema word that will spark life mm -hmm. inside of me so that when I'm looking at this storm right now and when, when hopelessness wants to lie to me and tell me that I can't ever step out of that, then we go to the women around us and mm -hmm. say, give me the word. Yeah, and, 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 we wanna, and we wanna be prepared to give them the word. We just have no. to be careful that what we're giving is the word yeah. and it's not our own advice. interpretation and advice. Right. And, you know, yes, we yes. wanna be armed with the word. Yeah. So, so this is where we drop the anchor then of God's word and we let it take hold. So what's the purpose of an anchor? As a visual learner, I needed to see. So I looked it up and an anchor from Merriam Webster is defined as a device usually of metal that's attached to a ship or a boat by a cable and cast overboard to hold it in a particular place by means of a fluke that digs into the bottom. Yep, so these are the flukes. And some, the video that I watched actually had four flukes. So it came mm -hmm. out this way and that way. Mm -hmm. And this is what I found really interesting when I watched that video, is that when you put an anchor, you throw the anchor out, it takes time for the anchor to get all the way to the bottom. And so the captain of the ship knows exactly the right time to throw that anchor because he knows where he wants the ship to stop. And so he understands and recognizes when the right time to throw the anchor overboard is because it doesn't just go down and drop. It goes out and it's a, it moves at a pace. And some of the rope is like 30 feet, you know, there's... Mm -hmm. It depends on the depth of the... Right. Of the sea or the water. The of how in. long it, the mm -hmm. anchor, the rope needs to be, right? Mm -hmm. So it depends on the depth. And so when I saw that, I was thinking about how God knows exactly when that, the time is for that ship to stop. When my storm is going to stop, God knows. Mm -hmm. And he knows the word that is going to help me throw over, I'm going to throw that word down, but that doesn't mean that once I throw, I mean, of course God can do anything, right? I can throw the word out there and he can stop the storm immediately. But there may be other things happening where that ship is still going to sail and I've been speaking the word over and over and over and over, 
but the timing is not is not right yet and so the rope is going down the rope is going down and then what happens when that anchor hits the bottom that doesn't just cause it to stop either those flukes dig into the ocean floor and they go deeper and deeper and deeper and as it's going down into the ocean floor the dirt the 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 base of the ocean the dirt the sand whatever wow. it all is Even rocks, rocks all yeah. of that they're building up inside that fluke and they're putting more pressure and more weight on that anchor and that is what brings if you didn't have this the flukes at at right I can see that they would just go bounce, 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 bounce mm -hmm. across the bottom. They wouldn't do what they were supposed to do. Think about it. It takes that time for the anchor to get deep enough to stop the movement of the ship. So we have to allow God the opportunity because he's the captain. He knows when that ship is going to stop. He knows what he wants to bring out of you in a storm. He knows what he wants to bring out of me in the storm. He knows the ruts that he wants to get us out of. He knows the plans and purpose. And if he can bring all good things out of every storm in our life, then we need to rest in the storm and trust that, he, Lord, I threw that anchor. I threw the anchor out. Now I'm just going to wait and I'm going to keep throwing it out a little bit of rope, a little bit more at a time, a little more at a time until I know that storm has come to an end. Mm -hmm. yeah. When your world is full of chaos and you drop the anchor of God's word, the word overrules the chaos within your day. The word never passes away and it never changes. The word overcomes the lies of the enemy. And the word anchors you in the midst of the wind and the waves. Yeah. And when you listen to the chaos of the news, it's going to anchor you. When you get a bad mm -hmm. report, the word is going to anchor you. Mm -hmm. When you feel lost without answers, it anchors you. If you allow the word to hold you fast to God, you will not be tossed by the wind and the waves of life and culture. Right. Now, who is God going to send to speak the word to you, to remind you what he said? What are the conditions in your life right now that are holding you hostage in the storm? Like Chrissy prayed for and received a rhema word dropped in her. And then she anchored herself to the logos, the scriptural promise found mm -hmm. in the verse in Romans. That verse became her anchor. And she tied herself to the promise found in that word. Because that word brought so much life to her, she's had so many opportunities to bring it as a Lego word because she's seen it work in her life. Mm -hmm. So now it brings hope in others. The, de the devotional we created using our late friend Cindy's notes is another example of someone who was anchored in the word. What rhema word has God brought to you at just the right time that you've forgotten? Let God bring it back to you. Or be sure that you are listening when he might want to just drop another word in you. Yeah. So we arise when we drop the anchor in God's word rather than any other false stronghold that the world has to offer. The world is going to offer a lot. And the culture around you is not going to tell you to love your enemy. The voices around you are not going to remind you to lay up treasures in heaven. And the voice of culture is going to want you to believe that you should have everything you want right now. Yep. Yep. But that's not the way it is. No, it's not. That's our flesh. That's the empire. Where have we allowed ourselves to build a stronghold based on cultural norms rather than the truth of God's word? Mm -hmm. Remember that Jesus said, it is written and forever remains written, forever remains written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. All generous giving and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or slightest hint of change. God never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
we are the ones that he is changing. What we tend to do is ask him to change for us mm -hmm. rather than change us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a hard one to swallow. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it sure is. Paul shook off his perception that the storm would end in death because he'd been given one word of hope by an angel. It changed everything for him and those around him. One word of hope anchored in God's word that we are given or that we give can change the course for others too. Yeah, maybe we're the angels that God sends. Mm -hmm. Maybe. All right, so here we are. It's time for your activation plan. This month, we want you to shake off a stronghold that you've built as a place of security. Identify it. Where is it? What gives you this false sense of security that you think you, is causing, that's allowing you to survive? You know, we survive in our families, you know, in our homes. As a young mom, we survive the day with mm -hmm. little kids and you know, in our marriages, we survived another day, or at work, we survive another day. Well, you know, maybe God doesn't want you to just view it that way. That's a rut. That mm -hmm. is a rut mindset. Mm -hmm. And maybe God wants you to shake that off and look at where the chaos is in your life right now that he wants to give you a rhema word. Find it in the Logos word. Then allow God to remind you when you're struggling to step off onto that path, get out of that rut, say, God, bring up that rhema word that's going to spark some expectancy in, in there. I need to know that you are alive, that you are active, that your word is in here. That's the word that God has for you in this season. It's in this moment, right then and there, when you will realize that God is causing expectant hope to arise within you. Mm -hmm. So one way we, we can do that and we can do it together is to read the word mm -hmm. together. So as we've laid out the topics for the months for this whole year, we can see that God has us in the book of Hebrews time and again. So as a ministry, and let's take this next month to read and reread and kind of look into and study the book of Hebrews yeah. in our quiet time. Post your thoughts and your insights on your Activate Her page or on the National Activate Her Facebook page. And then as you sit down to read the word, invite the Holy Spirit into that time, into your quiet time, and he will bring that rhema life to it. Yeah, for sure. Right? And in your chapter discussions, brainstorm some natural strategies to remove the chaos of the storms of life and replace it with the sure, solid word of God. Let's just plaster the immutable word of God everywhere that we can think of in our lives, just like our friend Cindy did. Then follow Paul's example. Stand, speak, and arise expectant. That's right. So our focus this month is to shake off fear of what we see based upon the hopeless conditions that are staring us in the face right now. And we're going to replace that fear or hopelessness with the expectation that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And just as Paul trusted him to bring him ashore, mm -hmm. we can do the same. Then we will take our place in our destiny and purpose that God has for us. You can arise expectant because expectancy comes from knowing God's word and the belief that his word is true and he will never change. Take your place in the stability of knowing God isn't going anywhere. He's not going to change his commitment or his address. Have a great discussion, and we'll see you next month. Bye, girls. <laughs>